is going to be Mr. Benny Cherney. And the other speakers that are going to follow him uh, are going to be the head of the cyber in Rafael, one of the leading uh, Israeli company and uh, well known in the world, the head of the Israeli uh, New Innovation Authority and the uh, head of the biggest uh, Israeli hospital which are leading the cyber security in, in hospital. Let me say, first of all, thank you very much for uh, uh, Minister Bennett. The Ministry of Education is doing miracles on education. And you all know, education in cyber is one of the most important thing that you have to do with the young people all over the world. Mr. Benny Charney founded Opswot in 2002 to offer a unique market-driven approach to security application, design and development, and Opswot has been breaking new ground in cybersecurity ever since. As CEO, without outside investment, Benny has built Opswot into a leading cyber security firm with over 1,000 customers, 150 employees, and seven offices worldwide, something that we are very proud about it. I ask Benny, please come, and thank you very much for coming to be here. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, so, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about the uh, data sanitization technology. And I'd like each one of you to leave here with a few tips. What is, how can you select the data sanitization, or also, also called CDR, for your company? So uh, before I begin, I'd like to say a, a few things about myself. Uh, I founded uh, a bit about uh, myself. So I did not serve in 8200. Uh, I, did, uh, I was an officer in an artillery unit. And after my, my uh, service, uh, I studied at the Technion, uh, computer science. A few years later, I founded Opswot. And back then, I was uh, the CEO, uh, the VP of R&D, the CTO, the CMO. Uh, the developer, the help desk, the coffee maker, the bagel delivery guy. Uh, though since then, the company has grown uh, with uh, seven offices, 24-7 uh, uh, support, over 300 partners, way over 1,000 uh, customers, way over 150 uh, employees. Um, and now, since uh, I'm only a CEO, then I have uh, uh, some time to... Uh, uh, raise my two kids, uh, run here and there, and fly some airplanes. So uh, what do we do? Um, so we have three uh, amazing platforms. One is an advanced threat prevention from multiple cyber security attacks that are based in data. So what we do, we intercept all of the data channels, how data is flowing to your organization, whether it's coming from email, from APIs, from web portals, from kiosk, intercept them, recreate them, and prevent the most sophisticated advanced threats on organizations. We also have a next generation network access control. What it does, it prevents risky devices from accessing your cloud applications, whether you have Salesforce or Box or Office 365 or uh, any other cloud application, we have a very easy to deploy a cloud access control solution. And lastly, we have various cybersecurity tools that many cybersecurity experts, DevOps, uh, web developers, cybersecurity vendors are using to help build cybersecurity solutions. So, how to select a data sanitization or also called CDR for your organization. So before I begin, who here in the audience know what is data sanitization? Just raise your hands. Just I want to see just high level. Data sanitization, CDR, anything? OK, looks like I need to, to, to do some work here. OK, so let's talk about the challenge. Why data sanitization? Why organization needs data sanitization? So, as everybody knows, the amount of malware is keep increasing, whether it's target attacks or known threats, uh, where you see two reports, one from AV test, one from McAfee, the amount of threats keep growing and keep growing and faster and faster. The amount of vulnerabilities is also increasing. So what we did here, we took the CVE repository, I mean, a, CVE, a, a, common, a common vulnerability, we took all of the database and we tried to chart the trend of uh, known vulnerabilities out there, uh, 
and the interesting th thing is that we can see that the increase of file-based vulnerabilities. So this is the total vulnerabilities, the red line, which shows the configuration and file base. And the file base means just file base, which means uh, uh, the container. So the attacker is, uh, could exploit the container of a viewer to go in and penetrate a, a, a machine or a device, which results still an increase in data breaches to organization. So examining so many different cybersecurity solutions, you can see there are so, 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 so many uh, cybersecurity solutions. Many of them claims to uh, provide prevention. However, whenever we examine how all of these cybersecurity, or most of them are doing prevention, literally they're using various tools, whether it's machine learning or dynamic analysis or heuristics or a new algorithm or anything like that to achieve detection, and after the detection, get into the prevention. So the problem is that the detection is never 100% accurate. And you can see whether you see NSS report presenting the effectiveness of different cybersecurity. Some of them are living. Nobody achieves 100%. Whenever we look at A-B tests, the same thing. Again, doesn't matter which certification or testing, nobody achieves 100%. So what is data sanitization CDR? What is that solution? What is data sanitization? So what's unique about data sanitization that is not based on detection? So this technology is simply not based on detection. It's all, all about assumption that all of the files are bad. Literally, trust no file. Assume everything that arrives to your organization is bad, is, should be destroyed. Reconstruct, so have a very secure process to reconstruct the files. So whether you get a Word file, you create a new Word file. You create a PowerPoint, you create a new PowerPoint. You get a movie, a video, you create a new video. However, the creation has to be in a very, very secure process. Currently, the original file aimed to eventually be deleted. So the original file that you got, eventually get it to, eventually it's going to be deleted. And the file you end up using, it just used the reconstructed file. So literally, elimination. Elimination of the original file that you received. Another analogy, I like to provide this analogy whenever uh, I talk, we talk to customers whenever we, we talk about that. Again, not many uh, are very much familiar with that technology. It's like you go camping or you want to drink water. Literally, you boil them before you drink them. So whenever there is doubt, there is no doubt. So I ask various customers and partners, so how do you guys call data centers? You can see it in multiple languages. So I know there are various audiences here from multiple countries. Whether it's uh, so, you can see uh, various various uh, definition of how different uh, uh, language. How, how can you define data sanitization in various different languages? So, how to really select data sanitization to your organization? So, as I mentioned, it's all about reconstructing file formats. So. Anybody here knows how many file formats are out there? Let's go for the trivial thing. Who thinks that there are more than, less than 1,000 file formats? Raise your hands. Less than 2,000? Raise your hands. So there are over 4,550 different file formats and keep increasing and increasing and increasing. A, a huge amount of file formats. So one question to very much ask yourself is, what are the file types that you really use in your organization? So for example, uh, Japan and Korea using uh, JTT and HWP files. It's a uh, productivity document that looks very similar to Word documents, though in other parts of the world, the Word is more used, and in other parts, other parts. Some organizations use AutoCAD. Some organizations use more video. So what type of files your organization very much use? And obviously, whenever you pick a vendor, what type of files this vendor choose, or this support. 
how fast does the vendor support new file types? So every month, there are new file types. So how fast the vendor catch up with the new file types? Because you need to have a lot of engineering power to go and keep up with manufacturing new file formats and supporting new file form. So Adobe, Adobe have more, th they have eight versions of, of PDF files. PDF, actually not Adobe, PDF files has more than eight versions. So whenever there's a new version, how fast the vendor can catch up with a new format to go and create support for this recreation of this technology. The next thing is the quality of the sanitization. So obviously you're gonna go and recreate a file. So think about really complex files. Not only, not everything is like very simple images. Think about really complex files. Think about, for example, a PDF or PowerPoint presentation. There's animation, everything flowing. So is the recreation, was, is the recreation done correctly? So are the files usable? Can you really use the file in a very, in a, in a, in a clear way? What is the file size before and after? Again, whenever you're talking about regeneration of files, Talking about the, the file size is becoming, also could also become an issue to organizations. Other configuration options, whenever you create one file to one, one file to another file format, as you're creating the file, do you have options to reconfigure? And most importantly, does it work? So is there a specific uh, bug bounty process or is there crowdsourcing of malware going through this specific process? Is there a reverse engineering process to go and verify and validate that the synthesization is working as you are choosing that to your organization? Performance. Another key element whenever you go and look at choosing or implementing this technology in your organization is, is performance. Uh, by far, performance could be a, a very, very important factor. Recreating files could be, could be interesting. So, does the, does the solution support large files, small files? What's the performance analysis per specific file types? Does PDF uh, uh, perform differently than JPEG or video files? Can you, can you work it on different data channels? So for example, whenever you download the file, you're expecting an immediate result. An email can have a latency. So what's the performance based on different data channels as data is flowing and leaving your organization? Another key is, can the solution scale? So for example, you start with an office with 50 employees, you raise it up to 2,000 to 20,000, can the solution scale with you on the performance? And what's the cost per bandwidth? So what's gonna be your cost before and after? Another element for cost is, what's your total cost of ownership? How many IT guys do you need to go and keep on this specific solution whenever you choose to implement this solution. So, as everybody thinks, there is a major problem with this technology. The major problem with this technology is damn too good. <laughs> it's a big problem, why? Because if you're under attack, you want to know that you're under attack. So somebody's sending you a virus, somebody's sending you anything through a specific data channel, you want to know that you are under attack. So does the solution integrate to a vulnerability scanning? So if you know somebody is sending you a vulnerability and going exploiting this specific file, or somebody sending you known vulnerabilities or known viruses immediately after the publish in the field, you want to know that you are under attack. Because if you did not, then again, you, somebody would, would be able to go to a different data channel or something else or a, a different area in your organization to penetrate your organization. IT requirements, obviously, that's very trivial. Operating system requirements and what are, uh, what are the hardware requirements needed? Is that working on Windows? Are you a Windows shop? Are you a Linux shop? Does it work on Windows? Does it work on Linux? That's an obvious and, and, and trivial question to ask yourself. Another key element is security. Recreating a file. I mean, how the vendor is choosing the technology to recreate a file from one format to another. Is are the vulnerabilities? Is the operating system used to go and do that? Are the components used that are vulnerable to any sort of attacks? So this way, I, I, I'm hoping that I helped each one of you to go and get some tips about what is data sanitization, 
and how to select data sanitization to your organization. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, we have a, a seminar uh, next week uh, for the guys that are staying here longer, uh, visiting uh, uh, outside town, uh, that we plan to go and share more research about this matter, and we'll be happy to see you. We, we have a booth here, so if you want more information, we'll be happy, happy to share it with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Benny Charney. Wasn't